Hello everybody and welcome to the next Arkham Horror List video. Today we're going to be talking about an investigator pairing that we think would absolutely rock it in every campaign except Anne's Mouth because we haven't played that one yet. But we have knowledge of every other complaint, uh, campaign playing each of them probably more than five times except for Dream Eaters for me. I've played the hell out of this game. Holy hell, I need to go outside for a bit. Um, we have reasons, I mean, obviously, if we, we have reasons for each of these, but we'll break them down quickly and tell, say, why we think each of these have, you know, good reason for being their pairings. Starting with uh, Night of the Zealot, which is the core set campaign. And uh, honestly, when uh, an expert tells you, you just got to follow and listen. We got Roland Banks and Wendy Adams. So, Bryn, why this one for this for Night of the Zealot? Well, you see, they're uh, they're FFG approved. They're FFG approved. Yeah, they they say they say they're good for it, and uh, honestly, I can say I've never tried these two exact <laughs> investigators together. Incredible. Uh, but do you think Fano, Do you think they would just go out there and they would tell lies? Yeah, they wouldn't just do that. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't. No. Yeah. Yeah, they say they're good. To, they say they're good together for this. They're probably good for this. Um, with the truth as well, like Night of the Zealot, it kind of just makes you test everything. It's not like specifically required. Like Midnight Mask is like a gauntlet. It's meant for testing your decks to see how it does, right? Like it's not really like focused or like has flaws that you can exploit like the other ones. And it's also only three can. It's only three scenarios. So let's go on to the meteor ones. We got. Dun uh, the Dunwich Legacy. So with this one, we have Joe Diamond and Luke Robinson. Uh, a big issue with the Dunwich Legacy is that for a good... So there's scenarios where the fighter just won't do anything. Like the Miskatonic Museum. For a good chunk of it, there's not going to be an enemy at that scenario at all. So is the fighter just supposed to like hang out and be like, Hey, let me go check out this exhibit. Oh my god, that bear scared me, right? So yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly that, Justin. Um, this is why uh, Travis suggested Joe Diamond is because he has four book and four fist, which means that you can kind of just, you know, do everything when you need to. When there's no enemy, you can grab clues, and then when an enemy appears, you get into punchy punchy shooting mode. Seems sick. Uh, Luke Robinson is good in a majority of campaigns. Uh, a reason why we chose him here is because uh, most notably, actually, honestly, um, he's probably great in the final scenario, Lost in Time and Space, right? Because oh yeah, he yeah, doesn't need to, to walk go any place. Yeah, he can just like yep. dream yeah. he is somewhere else in time and space. That's probably yeah. super good. Um. And as well in Undimensioned and Unseen, where sometimes you're just at the whim of the random chance of those creatures, uh, Luke Robinson with his big brain can go in and like take advantage of it uh, to get them in the corner. Or alternatively, if he is faced by those creatures because they venture into his space and some of them can get particularly nasty, he can just GTFO, which is very strong. Uh, in addition, there are those damn avian thralls in uh, Dun uh, Dunwich Legacy, so having Luke have a spell to deal with those, or alternately Joe Diamond with a gun, uh, which he can get. With uh, a gun. Yeah, with gun. Uh, is, uh, I, was like, I hope he, has, he can get guns. He has two guns in his art. Um, uh, it's easy to deal with those birds because they can be quite a nuisance as well. Let's Joe go Diamond on to Carcosa. Has access to a cult invocation if he chooses. Which is a spell. Yes, yes. Uh, let's go on to Carcosa. Why do you want to one of you guys take this one? Travis, I'll let you take the one that you've played the most of at our group for that. Okay. You know who she is. Oh, it's Carolyn. Uh, this one's pretty easy. There's lots of brain damage in our code. Carcosa and Carolyn heals brain damage. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and coincidentally, she also pairs very well with Agnes, who likes to take brain damage. Huh? Yeah. And pretty wild. Uh, what's especially great about Agnes is that 
if you heed a certain character's warning and a certain word makes you just take sanity damage if you say it, wow. Wow. Like, just being able to just proc your ability just by saying a word in every phase of the game, where in the last campaign, the last scenario, you don't die from going crazy. And if you're worried, Carolyn can just show up and like talk to you to make you feel better. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. I don't think there's much more to say. Obviously in this group, you want to have your uh, Agnes focus on the damage if you're unsure on that, because Carolyn, she can use the meat cleaver, but her just staying as a cleaver is more efficient. And it's also great too, because Agnes can still take Pete. Carolyn doesn't need him, right? And then is Carolyn only when she heals or when any player it's heals? It's when she heals. She it. heals? Okay. Yeah, she but I mean, Agnes it. and Pete are still a killer combination. And Carolyn can grab other allies like Dr. Milan to help her investigate better. Sweet. Let's go on to the Forgotten Age, which is Trish Scarborough and Kelvin Wright. Brand, why is Kelvin good in the Forgotten Age? Because you're going to end up eating a butt ton of trauma. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's pretty good on Calvin. <laughs> you get to start the game with real numbers instead of zeros. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just not having to do cool. a little bit of work right off the bat is yeah. is nice. Yeah, you do have to be, like, a little careful to make sure that you don't end up with six of one of them on you. Yeah. But it's not that difficult. I just also with Kelvin, you can be like, I'm not going to waste money on uh, waste my precious uh, supply points on blankets. I don't need blankets. Where we're going, we don't need blankets. And then he's like cut to Kelvin, like freezing to death. Yeah. And he's just like, he's like, oh, feels so, so cool. good for the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Trish is here because you don't really want to kill the enemies in um, the, at least the majority of the snakes. You don't want to kill them in the Forgotten Age. So being able to just be like in, evade an enemy and then grab a clue and then just grab more clues while the enemy's there and then maybe even just leave or like it's just like or just grab a clue and then evade an enemy. Like it all just seems like really good for Trish. It seems like it'd be a fantastic campaign for her. Of course, <laughs> there is that awkward moment where they both turn into Yithians, but don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Any other Stand thoughts from you head. guys? Sick. We'll I mean, move turning, on. Turning into <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I took, I took the sounds. It's like, like a strict you. upgrade for Calvin. Which one? Turning into a Yithian is a strict upgrade for Calvin. It's true. <laughs> Poor guy. All right. <laughs> uh, circle undone. We got Gloria Goldberg and Diana Stanley. Now, I know what you're thinking. Holy crap, Justin. These are two purple investigators. I'm going to stretch my card pool so thin. Yeah, yeah. if you're building one collection, it's going to be a bit tricky. Yeah. But uh, let me present a little counterpoint to that. Um, Gloria Goldberg, you give her the purple cards like Alyssa Graham or like upgraded scrying. So she just looks at the top of the deck. Diana Stanley, she gets all the cards that cancel things off the top of the deck. And then Gloria gives Diana those cards, and then everything is hunky-dory. In addition, um, their splash colors have no crossover, so you're just going to have to worry about some of the purple. Um, they could. They're, they're they could. could. Gloria can play blue. She can play yeah. blue? Man. Yeah. I probably would Red the one she case. can't play, or is it yellow? I think... Let's, let's find out. I can. I'll just. I'll just quickly search her name. Gloria. Um, she can play Guardian, Seeker, and Rogue. So she can't play Red. Uh, yeah, it's Red. So yeah. In that case, I mean, there's probably still not a lot of crossover if you do choose Guardian, but you have two other classes that you can just like dive into, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. A big thing for the Circle Undone is that it tests your brain a lot. So having investigators with high brain, when Diana Stanley's fully kitted out with her basement, she can get up to six, and that's not including other things. So like, that's a pretty good brain test. And then also being able to control who gets what hex with Gloria or who draws the toot toot card is very powerful for that campaign. 
yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that says like once you get your third one. Yeah. It's a, like bad, bad, not good. And like with uh, Gloria, you can just put the third one on the bottom of the deck when you see it. <laughs> yeah, like either, either one of them actually. Like if Diana cancels one of them, it's just like, cool, that's a card that's not in the Mythos deck anymore. Yeah. Um, and Gloria can just be like, let's discard one of them so that these ones all suck. I have played with Gloria on two campaigns. And for I highly recommend like... Just when you're, like, playing with her, don't worry about putting cards in her basement. Just discard them. Because then, like, it's just... Like, you could put an Ancient Evil in your basement, but just discard everything. It's not a problem. Now you just didn't draw yeah. it. It's fantastic. And no risk. And we hate risks. Well, I do, anyway. Uh, what's next? Dream Eaters. So this is the uh, sleepy side. These are the people in the dreamlands, I think was our first one. I guess these could be kind of cross between, um, but a big one is Zoe. And Bryn, why do we like Zoe in uh, Dream Eaters? Well, uh, when you engage an enemy, you get a resource. Mm -hmm. When an enemy has swarming, it counts as that many enemies. Wow. Get infinite money for free. Yeah, just by engaging an enemy. Yeah. It's pretty easy. And it doesn't make it harder to kill them. And you could still, like, even just zap yeah. one away, potentially, with your cross. Yeah. Seems like a good time. It does seem like a good time. And then, Travis, why did we choose Rex Murphy? Because he's good. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> because he is Rex good. is always good. Yeah, he because just... Zoe doesn't do the clue thing good, but Rex does do the clue thing good. Yeah. He just, he gets clues good. There's not much more to say. Uh, all right. That's good. Uh, other half of the Dream Eaters for the Companions, we got Mandy Thompson and Nathaniel Cho. So, uh, Nathaniel Cho, he punches. Bryn also had a great point where there's some spiders that just kind of like spindle away. And he can use his get over here um, to scorpion pull it to him, uh, which is pretty cool nice to de deal with those annoying enemies um yeah i just think he we don't want any like cross like repeats and nathaniel joe he's a great fighter and like he'll have a lot of tricks for dealing with the enemies that show up yeah um i mm -hmm. think the companion side has more beefier like one enemies like with those big like gray weavers who have five health yeah, yeah. um yeah and he can just one two punch them yeah, so Nathaniel being in no that trouble. side makes a bit more sense. There are still swarming spiders, obviously, but, I mean, it's easy then to trigger his boxing gloves with those two. And then, Travis, why did we choose Mandy Thompson for the Seeker, for the Kluver for this campaign? It's because she's good. Well, yeah, she is. <laughs> she's good. Um, wow. Yeah. And as we saw in our first in our run when Travis was Mandy... Uh, she does really good in this campaign because she's bonkers busted good. Don't know if there's yep. much more to say. Yep. Just Mandy. She's great at everything. Well, everybody, that was our just some investigator pairings for every campaign. This was a, a user suggested video. So thank you so much for that. If you have any other suggestions for future videos you want us to make in our list series, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, are there any pairings that you think we missed that would be good for campaigns as well? Definitely let us know that in the comments as well. If you have not liked or subscribed, consider doing so. It helps out the channel a bunch. And then it makes you know us happy when you like our videos. Because then we go, yay. And that's a like a perfect representation of how we all act when it happens. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.